Today we're going to be talking about how to perform a replay attack using a HackRF and GNU radio. It is important to note that this method will not work on rolling codes. Of course, the first step is to identify the frequency of the equipment that we are going to be performing the replay against. There are a couple ways in which we can do this. The first would be to use a spectrum analyzer to listen for the signal. A popular one is SDR Sharp. For the remotes, there are a couple of common frequencies which are a list on screen to provide a good starting point on where to look. I'll show you how this looks in SDR Sharp now. You can see I'm looking at 433 MHz because this is perhaps the most common. I also happen to know that this is the frequency of the button that I'm using. You can see when I click the button, the frequency jumps up and you see the signal on the waterfall. The next method is to use the FCC database. Since all wireless equipment must be certified, you can actually look up the application and find the frequency that way. MS Stedco is a popular manufacturer of door opening devices, so we're going to look them up for this example. Company names are not hard to find since they typically print it on the exterior of all their equipment. So we're going to do an advanced search, and under the applicant name is where we're going to put MS Stedco. As you can see, they have various grants here. I'm going to bring up one in particular. On here, you can see that the frequency range it uses is between 386.5 and 387.5 in megahertz. As you will see in GNU radio, we record with a 2 megahertz section, so the typical bandwidth of a 1 megahertz separation on here is no problem. For the most accuracy, we're actually going to place the center point on 387 and record 0.5 megahertz on each side of it. Now let's get into using GNU Radio Companion. The first thing I want to make note of is that the default GUI is QT. This is important for when we put a couple of the tools in. We're just going to want to use the defaults. So we don't have to change anything and that there are no mismatches. First thing we're going to do is change the sample rate. I always change this to be 2 million. It's the lowest that's recommended for the Hack RF and it ensures the most accurate results. Now the first thing we have to do is specify our source. Our source is the Hack RF. So in order to specify this, we're going to use an OSCOM source. Now you can go through and look. It's found under the no module specified sources OSCOM source. But we're going to actually use the magnifying glass up here. It just makes it a lot easier to bring up the things we need. See so here, OSMOCON source. We're going to drag that right in. You'll see our sample rate has been pulled over into there, so we don't have to change any of that. But there are a couple of things that we have to change in here. Let's open up our properties. Alright, so first up we're going to have to change the frequency that this is operating on. So obviously 100 megahertz is not what we're operating on. We're going to be working with 433, so let's change that. And let's go down to the RF game. The settings I use are 0, 16, and 16 and we don't need to change the channel bandwidth or anything like that. The IF gain is your intermediate band and the BB gain is your base band. We don't need to get into specifics of what they do until later on when we're actually doing the transmitting. Great, so that's all set up. Now there's two elements that we're going to put in. One's 100% necessary and the other is so we can visualize it. So let's put the visualization in first here. So we're going to bring up a QT GUI, and this is going to be the frequency sync. Now what this is going to be doing is visualizing what we're actually hearing with the Hack RF. So let's connect these two, click right here, and click right there. Great. Now the other thing we have to do is save this to a file in order for us to replay it later. And we do this with a file sync. Alright, so we're going to drag in our file sync over here. Let's connect it up. And we actually have to change the properties here to specify where we want to record our file to. Now I highly suggest you record to something like your documents folder or desktop. I'm going to overwrite this one I already made here. That way you don't get any errors of files that can't be overwritten or such. So what this is going to do is going to take our HackRF, record it to a file as well as visualize it for us. So let's go up here and run it, and you'll see this pop up. Now you'll know it's recognizing your RF and working if you see this display right here. 
If you see a blank white screen, it probably means that it's not recognizing your HackRF properly, so you should unplug a wireless mouse or anything like that you have plugged in. So let's click it and you'll see it export. Great, so it captured it now. And we're actually going to run that one more time because it captured all that empty space in front of it. So let's just open it up, capture, and we're good. Great, now we have to work on the actual transmit function. Let's create a new file here. Same thing we did before, we're going to change our sample rate. Let's make this 2 million. And now we're going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to start with a file source. So our file source, let's specify where we saved that file before. That would be our recording.dll right there. Let's apply and OK. Now the next thing we're going to put in is something you actually realize you need once you've tried um, transmitting. This is actually a multiply constant which will make your signal a little bit stronger so that it will actually be recognized by the rece original receiver. So let's just search for that right there. I like to do a value of 6 just because it works well for me and I know that's compatible with the HackRF. Great. Now we've got to send that out back to the HackRF for it to output. So again, we're going to be using the sync right here because it's an output. We'd use the source if it was an input. So let's connect these two up and let's change some of the settings in here. Again, we have to change this to be the correct frequency. We're going to put our RF gain to zero. We're going to put the IF gain all the way up to 47, again, so that it's properly received and it's giving out a proper amount of power. And we'll just leave that gain at 20 because it's not really relevant for transmitting. and you see our sample size was pulled over again. Now I also want to visualize this because I want to know when it's sending the signal to ensure that it's working properly. But before we actually have the GUI interface that will show us it, we need to put a throttle in there. Now the purpose of this throttle is to prevent this from using 100% of our CPU and making everything unresponsive. This is necessary because we're actually reading from a file and not just recording to the file. So we'll just throw a throttle in there. You don't have to change any settings on it. And now let's throw our GUI in there. So let's go to our GUI frequency right there. GUI frequency sync. And let's connect those two up. Great. So let's try running this. Of course we have to save it. So let's just save it as transmit. And now it's going to run. It'll bring up our right there. Great. And what you actually just heard there was the receiver I have set up for making sure that this is working properly. So great. So this is all working and this is doing exactly what we want it to do. And uh, one other thing of note, let's say you were sending like an open door command or something like that. This repeat in the file source right here is actually going to make it keep going over and over again. Um, so you can turn this on or off whether or not you need it right in the properties. Repeat, yes, no, right there. But that's how you do it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or you need any help.